I'm Mike and welcome to the workshops. Well, it's getting to that time of the year again and it's nearly Christmas and all those presents will be coming in to other people. But anyway, I'm going to make myself one. So I'm going to make myself a stand for my shaving equipment. Don't worry, it's, it's not for this magnificent baby. It's for here. But to do that, seeing as the time of the year, I'm well, I'm going to need a little bit of Christmas magic. First, it's time to get safe. Much better. Now let's sprinkle a little bit of fairy dust and get ourselves some materials. Some ash. I like it. Let's get down to the table and talk about this design. So this is quite rough, but this is the basic idea of the sketch. So we're going to have a base, a top to hang it, have our brush sit above our, have our brush sit above our bowl so it drips into it. Hold our razor here and a nice little spot for our beard oil. To do that, I'm going to take this nice piece of live edge ash. I'm going to cut it in half. Half of that is going to be my base and half is going to be my top. And then using this additional piece of thinner ash, I'm going to make the upstand. But before I do that, but before I do that, because this is a wany edge on both sides, I need to mark a straight line all along this, cut it, plane it down, that allow me to chop it up, and we can start marking and cutting, and then use the same on this one. So, let's get to that. Okay, so now we have a face side and a face edge. Let's mark them here. And we have one square edge to work from on all of these. It's time to start marking out. And because this is um and because this is based on actual things I have, I'm just going to space out my stuff where I feel it should go and see where we are. So I think looking at that we can make the top piece let's say 160 and that would leave us in around 170 for the bottom. I think that'll work. So I'm going to say my top piece is going to be 160. And then for the height, we don't want, we don't need to come very high. So I'm just put it like that. I think that's probably high enough. So we'll mark it there. And this is a handy kind of methodology if you're making stuff and you haven't fully worked out what you're going to do. Working it out dry, seeing how things fit is a great way of working that out. So I know I'm going to have my brush a little higher, but I want my brush to be over this where it drips out of the brush, get caught in this, so we don't have water going onto the raw timber. So now, I have my dimensions, I know what size I'm going to go, let's square this up, start cutting. So, my bottom here, I'm going to leave pretty much so as it is, I might knock the edges off. So I don't need to do anything with that for the next little while. I'll put that over here. So with my top, I don't want it to be this deep. I want it to be shallower. I don't want it to have as much of an impact. And also I want to add a curvature to the back of it to kind of make it fancy. So I need to make sure that when I put in my slots, I'm deep enough that these are being held and in on the face. So again here, 
I just mark it. So So the deepest I need to go is 35 and I want to keep a bit of material behind it. So so I spent quite a lot of time here foostering and drawing and redrawing and coming up with the shape that I wanted and how everything would fit. So I won't make you watch that. <laughs> this is going to be a long enough video as it is. So we'll just jump ahead to the final design now. So after a bit of foostering and sketching, I've come up with this design. So I'll make a little template for these curves just gives us a little bit more depth behind this and I won't go quite as far back with this so I know where I am here so I'll do the same as I did before I'm going to cut very close to this line plane it off check that I'm maintaining my square edge and then I can mark up on this and fit my dovetail in the back piece and when it's all fit and beautiful I'll make up a little template mark it out and then cut it on the bandsaw and sand and finish it so now we have all our pieces marked out let's start marking out our dovetails now I've done loads of dovetails on this channel I even have a video explaining how to do dovetails in great detail which will be up in the car here somewhere so Let's get down to a montage with some music. But before I do that, I need to cut out my templates. So I took my basic design and transferred it into AutoCAD. I then just printed out one as to one and using a bit of spray on adhesive, I cut them out in cardboard. It's important in this case that I make sure to mark everything first because I don't want to mark, cut my dovetails and then realize that the work I put into the angles and shapes that I want here will be wasted because it's going through my dovetails. So before I can start marking my dovetails, I have to mark out what it's going to look like in its final shape.
So now I have my tails cut, and it's also my preference to cut my tails first and then mark my pins. And I always use this method where I put a little piece of timber up to the edge and then sit it on top of it. That allows me then to very carefully place my tail set and mark around it then with a razor sharp scalpel. This gives me the best results and when I cut these generally using the fine saws uh, I don't have to remove material from the inside it generally fits off the saw And in a second here you'll see proof positive of that. I'll just cut out my waist and pop it in and there you go. All I have to do then is clean out the bottom. Tight as the tight gets. And for all of these joints I always use my shoulder jig. I will have a video coming up in the future because I use this in so many of my videos and this one does need a, an upgrade. But it's the exact same thing for the mortises or not the mortises pardon me <laughs> the dovetails in the top so i won't show you that i'll just jump ahead to when it's all ready so with all my joints cut now comes the designy part so i'll just double check that everything fits first and then using that template i'll go over my initial marks and cut this to shape so for this i just rough it out with the bandsaw and then I final shape the top piece and the sides just using my uh, belt sander set up in my vise and yeah nice and tight ready to go. So the last step then for a glue up is I want to work out where I'm going to put these. So I think there's a good spot for that. And shank it that is 11. I should have marked this up before I uh, mark my lines, so I'll just have to guesstimate this a bit. So while live action Mike is doing his best guesstimating here, I'm going to explain what I'm doing here. So essentially what I want to do is have the full of my razor on the top there when I'm done. And to do that then I just drill a hole that's bigger than my shank, so I have a 12, 11 mil shank, pardon me. So I drill a 12 mil hole and then I cut down to those lines and clean it out and that's that one sorted. The slot for the brush follows almost exactly the same process. The only difference is here uh, I have to cut the curve at the back to match the curve of the brush and I do that kind of partially through marking around the brush and partially to trial and error so i just cut down the sides here the same guesstimating bulk most of the material out with my jigsaw and then finish it with my dremel so i'll just jump across now to that being ready to go so i did lose a little bit of footage here kind of showing the final sanding and stuff on that but after that point it's just a matter of doing the glue up and yeah this is done it's a simple little project and you can see there just how nice it came out that was just by back and forth and very slowly fitting and matching and carefully sanding
So, now that she's all sanded, out of the clamps, it's time for everyone's favourite time. Obligatory Danish oil time. Except I didn't push the camera when I put on the Danish oil. Everyone's second favourite time. Buffing Danish oil time. Now, everyone knows I love Danish oil, but I also really love ash. And this is actually the last piece of live as ash that I got from a local Harley maker. So I am going to have to get more because it just looks fantastic. Now, all that's left is to put it into use. Let's see how it works. that good I give it a, a full test here if not this is heavily edited but yeah it works and it gets all my shade and stuff off shelves and looks an awful lot more attractive thanks as always for staying to the end of the video make sure to like share subscribe and all that fun stuff and absolutely do try this at home just hear my mother now well he wouldn't have to do this if he didn't have such a long beard huh? Mm, makes you look awful dirty. Mm. What do you think? You're into Dubliners? Mm. Mm. You're too short to be a wizard. <laughs> Sorry, man. Let's get down to a melody with some melody. That makes no sense, does it? Starts with an M. Montage! <laughs>